And session four comes to a close. Session four? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I've been losing track. We've uh, got two sessions to go. Uh, yeah. Um. This show continues to suck. It sucks even more now that now that the episodes we're watching are in low quality. Oh, it's really bad. Especially since there are some screenshots that we got that just need... They deserve to be crystal clear, and they're just not. Um, but, yeah, so... Um... Fuck. <laughs> Alright, where, where the hell did we start? It was, uh... Damn, I closed the thing, too. Oh, goddamn. It was, uh... The Calico Clones. Was it? Yeah, that was the first one. Okay, so we get, um... So the Calico gets just sucked into an oil tanker. Just, a very large boat. Just eats it up. I thought it was a whale. Nah, I mean, would have been nice. But we don't get to the robot whale for a while. Or yeah. cyborg whale, whatever. Um, and then, uh... Two camis from Street Fighter... Uh, uh, abduct the crew, and they're commanded by a man with the dumbest looking glasses ever. We never see his eyes. I don't think he has any. He probably doesn't. Um, He's like Eggman. <laughs> I mean, if he does have eyes, you don't want to see him move. Oh, Let's not talk about Sonic 06. Yeah. Yeah, no. Not great. Uh, yeah, so... They're like... They get, well, because I forgot that at the beginning they got attacked by a UFO. That was after they got. Sucked after they up. got sucked in, but they got it. But but before they got escorted by ah, the, two, yes, the yes. two camis. They're like, turn off the lights. We don't like that. And then they shot the light, which did nothing. I mean, it turned off the lights. And then they got gassed. Yeah. <laughs> that will be a theme. Fog and gas. I mean, it, it happened uh, it many ha a time. It since. happened in every single episode. There was some form of gas or fog that was at least minorly to majorly involved. It was yeah. a very gassy session. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, so... And then they wake up and they're like, we have these bandages. And it's like... Wow, the, oh, the skin has been scraped. Yeah. Huh. Just, just like, why would you need a bandage for that? Well, why you would you take hairs? Mm -mm. The, he's not making a hair monster. Uh, that would be like Hedora, but like... It would be like the one thing from uh, Looney Tunes. Gossamer? Well, the, bi the big thing that like tries... Yeah, Gossamer. Uh, okay. Or Gossamer or something like that. It's, it's something like that. I... I don't know why I know his name. I just do. All right. Well, regardless. Um, so, it turns out the guy's like, I created all these clones of these pretty ladies. I think it's his daughter. He he never says that. I'm pretty sure he says that. That's awkward. <laughs> uh, I don't know why he's making clones of his daughter. And because I, everybody laughed at him when he was trying to take over the world with his 11 herbs and spices. Oh, uh, he is not Colonel Sanders. It, it, you'll see him. His plot is the same as Colonel Sanders. Oh, it's completely the same. Except anyway, he's after oil. Yeah, so... To the, cook the, his chicken in. The main <laughs> crew is off to go meet Oil Baron guy. <laughs> I guess, yeah, that's and fucking weird. And he's like, well, here's my plan. I'll just make clones of you. And then they'll go meet the oil baron. Even, and then I will get the oil. And, but he's like, they'll tell you where the oil is, even though the oil is literally where they're meeting him. Yeah. Fucking dumb. Yeah, but that doesn't matter yet. Anyway, so he tells him the plan, and he's like, well, I'm going to make clones of you. Okay, now go back to your cell that's underwater with piranhas. <laughs> Yep. And then they, to escape the cell, they open up the hatch at the top, which is still underwater. Yeah, but it doesn't flood the cell. And the child climbs out the hatch into the water. Yeah. But, you know, like, I think air might be a bit more dense than water. Like, it doesn't go up or anything. <laughs> like, it just... It, air sinks when it's in the water, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's how air works. I mean, we've already shown that there are going to be weird air pockets in the ocean... 
So the plan now is to pull the old bait and switch with the clones and then pretend to be the clones so they can leave. Yep. And it works. Somehow. Despite yeah. the fact that it was shown that this man has cameras everywhere. Yeah, but he's really dumb. Yeah, no, he's a complete moron. And so like he's like, I'm going to feed you to the fish. And they're like, okay. He's like, good answer. And they're like, but what about the mission? He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, no, the clones. They're right in front of me. Okay. They don't have bandages. We forgot about how they programmed the clones. Mm. Yes. They they basically put the uh, hair salon air dryer on them and zapped them in the brain. It's brilliant. Yeah, and it's one size fits all. Adult male, adult female, Godzuki. child, Godzuki. Yep. That, one size fits all. It works. Uh, yeah, so... Uh... <clears throat> Upon realizing he has been fooled, he summons the Kraken. Yes, he uh, he shows that he cloned a squid and made it really big, and it follows orders. Which, yeah. okay... Uh, cephalopods, I'm hoping I'm getting that term right, uh, they are very intelligent. So, yeah, it it stands to reason, if you could somehow figure out a way to communicate with it, it could understand commands. Clarinet. He plays a clarinet, that's how he gets them. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so, the Kraken, he releases the Kraken, I mean, it was already released, but he sicks the Kraken on the crew. Uh, and then, and then Godzilla shows up, and then, and then, like, takes the battle underwater, and we have to be told that an amazing battle must be taking place underwater. As as she looks at the camera. Yes. To, to, to reinforce to us that good things are happening, despite the fact that they didn't take the time to animate it. And so they, they uh, Godzilla and the Kraken reemerge. Ka- Kraken's tied up in a ball or something like that. Yeah, and he just tosses them over. The Throws them over the horizon, and and the doctor's like, "I'm out of here." Grabs Cammy number fourteen. They're yeah, on a boat. There's several of them. Oh, there, there's several of them. Several Cammies. Oh, I thought it's there was ridiculous. One. I thought there was only one on the. Boat. No, no, no. It's, it's implied that every one of his clones are on that boat with him. Hmm. And well, then Godzilla just kind of reaches over and grabs it and is like, well, you're going to jail. And then Godzilla's just going to hold this boat until the authorities arrive. Godzilla works for the police. I mean, he's basically Interpol. I, I guess. Uh, and that concludes... Well, then they go to Oil Baron's house. Yeah. And uh, Godzuki gets... Slimed. Yeah. It looks like he's melting. Yeah, it's real good. Yep. And then he licks the child... <laughs> yeah, licks the oil <laughs> off of the child. It's gross. And then we lead into Micro Godzilla. <laughs> an episode. Oh my god. An episode we looked at the title and we said, this is gonna fucking suck. <laughs> and despite the fact that the premise is terrible, especially since it revolves around a fly. It produced some of the greatest scenes oh, we in got the entire a, series. We got a lot of frames for this one. Oh my god, yes. Alright, so they they wander into fog and it's like it's a typhoon wait, was this a typhoon? This was a typhoon that turned it that this is a typhoon, so they call in Godzilla to carry the It just picks up the ship, just awkwardly walking, and then goes into some weird pink fog. Yeah, and then kind of starts shrinking a little. Yeah. And the fly also... So there's a fly in the... In the beginning. In the beginning or whatever. And they're like, we gotta clean this place out. Including this fly. And yeah. they, they, they irritate it. It flies outside into the pink fl- pink, pink fog. Yes. And then begins to grow. Yes. Uh, so the important thing is that Brock tries to swat at it. And Godzuki chases after it. This will become important later. As the fly continues to grow, it begins to harass only Brock and Godzuki. It has a vengeance. It's intelligent enough to have a vengeance, but not intelligent... Well, (laughs) it's intelligent enough to have a vengeance. And then they lock it in a trunk. And then they let it back out. And And then they lock Brock... And then Zelda theme plays. It's like... No, (laughs) but... 
<laughs> you found a fly. Uh, and then and then they lock Brock and uh, and Katsuki in not not in the trunk in, the in, in, in in the storage room. And the fly's like, ah, hell no, don't the doors <laughs> just, ain't stopping me. Just fucking headbutts it. It looks fucking dumb. Again, we, we wish we could like put in gifts. It would be incredible. But um, yeah. So uh, I think they go outside and they're like. Oh no, Godzilla's shrinking. Or he's smaller than what he was, or something. So they take a blood sample of him. Did which... they take a blood sample? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. With the mm. giant turkey baster of a yeah. syringe. Uh, and then... Uh, and, and then biologist lady starts working on figuring out how the gas works. And as Godzilla continues to shrink, and then they awkwardly bring him on board as he's the size of Godzuki... <laughs> they, they, they just pull him up with a fishing net. Yeah, no, it's pretty great. Um, and then, and then we cut to fucking what's what's wrong? What's the child's name? What's wrong, Pete? It's Godzilla as he's like sprawled out on a box, looking like the iguana that he totally is. <laughs> just like fuck you, fuck you, fuck your shit. I, I saw him as a cat, I mean, <laughs> like a, like a wet cat. You're just not kissing at everything. <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> and he's just so grumpy. And then and then he starts getting even smaller. And so so they take him to the basement, put him in a fishbowl, and leave him. Yeah, and they're just like he'll be fine. And then a rat comes out and goes, "Oh hell no!" Um, and got and then Godzilla's also like, oh hell no, nah, you're not gonna fuck me up. I know what happens in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till we get there. Oh my god. Um, and so uh, yeah, he tangos with a rat for a long time. Yeah, a very long time. And and the, and the rat takes a laser beam to the face. And uh, it was more to like the like the haunches. Whatever. He takes a laser beam. Rat's unimpressed. Yeah, and uh, but so so then um, Godzilla tips cans with uh, firm, firm, uh, uh, it, it's unintelligible bullshit writing on it. It's ridiculous. Uh, and then the rat's like, and then the rat gets up on its hind legs to run away. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And then the rat was gone. Yeah, and then the rat's like, I'm done. And then Godzilla continues to shrink. Oh, he cl yeah, he climbs up the table to get back in the fishbowl to be like, Oh, guys, I didn't leave the fishbowl. I don't know what you're talking no, about. No, 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 it's fine. And then spider drops down, and now he's got to fight a spider. Well, he falls into the web, and then the spider comes out. Ah, right, right. And, and, so, and so we have the recreation of the fight with the Spiga. Yeah, and it goes just about as well as you think it would. Yep, uh, it becomes fire versus web, which I think also happened... In all monsters, not all monsters attack. It all also happened in Son of Godzilla. Web, when, when Kumonga started firing Web out of his mouth, I'm pretty sure Maybe? there was a, there was a beam to Web battle. There might have been. I don't know. It's been like six years since that happened. Yeah, but yeah. So so this that happens, and that's when. They show up and they're like, oh no, Godzilla got out. And it's like, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? And so, uh, Pete blocks the Spiga with his hand. And, and, then, and the Spiga just disappears under the floorboards. Yep, just plotting its next move. But now Godzilla has shrunk down to the size of like half a pea. And so they pick him up with tweezers. And they plop him into a petri dish as he drops in and proceeds to flail his arms because apparently he can't swim. <laughs> See, this is where we need the gif because, man, we could not get... Oh. We could not get a decent screenshot. It's probably come up at this point already. Yeah, but. yeah. No, but it's fucking hysterical. It, God, this entire episode was just full of just hilarious, hilarious images. Uh... And then, and then they're like all in a panic because biology lady's really tired because she's been working really hard for like four hours, and um, 
They're like, take a nap. And she's like, no, if I take a nap, he'll be gone. Yeah. He'll slip through the molecules. Mo- he'll give you, he'll, he'll shrink below the subatomic level and just fall through the gaps. And so he is, sh- and, and she literally says he now has to contend with the bacteria. Because apparently they put him in a dish of dirty water. Look, they couldn't distill the water in time. It's fucking dumb. And so he gets attacked by bacteria. He takes one to the junk. It was awful. And he's just like fighting them and he fires a beam and it makes a hole in the side of the Petri dish. And he gets sucked out of it. They're just completely sucked out of it and they can't fucking find him. They, well, like, luckily... She, well, wait, you gotta remember, she literally peers down for, like, a frame and goes, He's gone! But luckily, at the beginning of the episode, they establish they have this amazing device to find anything, no matter how small, even if it's the size of a fly. Which Godzilla is, in fact, smaller than. Much, much smaller. And so, they, they target him with the electrified pink gas... And we don't get to see him grow. Grow. He just is the size of a dog now. And, and, and so Brock's got him in a full Nelson and is carrying him like a dog. <laughs> as you will see. Or it have is, seen. It is the fucking funniest thing. Like, there were so many moments in this fucking episode where we were just losing our minds. Um, not the funniest part of this entire session, but goddamn, was it much more consistently funny. Uh, and then dumps him in the water, and then he just immediately, like, a fucking, one of those, like, spun, like, dinosaur sponges, just, like, immediately grows to full size, and now has to contend with the giant fly. Yeah. And they're like, well, we have to shrink the fly down instead of killing it. So they hit it with the gas, and it just... Just tiny, immediately. Tiny again. Yep. It's great. And then the day was saved. Thanks to Godzilla. And then... Where do we move on to from there? Uh, <laughs> the ghost ship! The ghost ship. Jesus Christ. This this one sucked. So they're sailing in the Arctic, we think. Or, but she said it was tropical water. We don't know where they were. There was an iceberg. They ran. They ran into it, and then they're like, "Oh man, a, a German U-boat from World War One." So we get to dodge the Nazis. Better thaw it out. So Godzilla thaws it out, and they're like, "Yo, can we go over there?" Uh, Pete and Brock are like, "Yo, can we go over there and check it out? Mm-hmm. Take some pictures with our camera." And then people emerge from... Uh, there's a man with the reverse Hitler stash. Uh, and then he's the captain with his monocle. And then they get out and they start using the cannon. And that actually was the normal... Like, this was surprisingly historically accurate. Uh, this was the normal uh, way that a U-boat would attack opposing ships. And actually, it is completely accurate that they would request the surrender of a civilian ship because they used to just fire on them. But what, what the Allies would do was make fake civilian ships and then fire on the U-boat. So then they just gave up and just started shooting civilian ships because fuck it. But anyway, they requested surrender. They get on board and they're like, guys, the war's over. They're like... No, it's not over. That was 60 years ago. And then they're like, let's show you some crazy shit. This is a TV and a weatherman. Uh, it's a magical... You don't have weathermen in Germany. Magical talking picture box. No, it's a TV and it's a live broadcast, you freaking morons. Well, they wouldn't know that. They're from the 18, 19, 1918. And then there was like... And, and then weirdly uh, on the weather mat, there was like a Godzilla-shaped cloud. It was yeah, really it was awkward. Pretty good. You know, I thought it was supposed to be a lake, and I'm like, there's not a lake covering like Texas. It was a Godzilla forecast. It was dumb. We're, we're going to get that in a few episodes. Godzilla in Texas is going to be wearing a 10,000-gallon uh, hat. <laughs> Cowboy boots. <laughs> Giant spurs. It'd be great. Uh, but yeah, so, and then they're like, oh no, this giant experimental torpedo that we made to sink a battleship. <laughs> a dreadnought. The... Specifically well, it... a dreadnought. Well, no, it was called the dreadnought. Oh, yeah, the dreadnought. A dreadnought. That's where the term dreadnought comes from. Yeah. The yeah. ship that was named 
Dreadnought. Yeah, the Dreadnought. And, but it is, for all intents and purposes, a battleship. And, um... This, this torpedo, an experimental thing from 1918... Has heat-seeking. Also, it was almost the size of a submarine. It had a lot of explosives in it. Thank God it wasn't nuclear, because otherwise it would have... Well, okay, we'll get to that part. Um... Yeah, so they're like, oh no, it's going to rust through. It, the connections are going to rust through, and then the torpedo will magically activate. And it did. Yes, and it, it began to chase them. It was So re- they called Godzilla, and like, yo, Godzilla, pick up this torpedo, well, like the well, rock. But wait, we, we had to, Godzuki had to take a turn. Because th- this is a picture you ah, guys are going to see. Right, right. And it's like, wow, that's... I, I believe you were just like, that's just a penis. And I was like... <laughs> Yep, it was that's inc- most weapons. It was incredibly fat. Like, oh, was it? And then you, they put the image of Godzuki riding it. Oh yeah, and it just got even more phallic and gross. Yeah, it was terrible. And God, it- Godzuki tried to be the Rock from uh from Fast and Furious, and tried to move a torpedo, and it didn't work. So then Godzilla showed up, and just picked it up and took it down to the bottom of the ocean. And they're like. It could explode any minute, because if it doesn't explode, if it doesn't hit its target in five minutes, it just blows up. Well, anywhere. So, instead of that happening, Godzilla just throws it, and that's when it explodes. And Godzilla recreates uh, that scene from Versus Mecha Godzilla, where he just, like, he's just resigned to his fate of being blown up. And then is unconscious under the water. Yeah, he just takes a... He sleeps with the fishes. Yep. And then, unfortunately, we have opened a cavern which contains a giant black octopus with friendly eyes. It's it's possible it just wants a hug. Yeah, it was real good. Uh, most of the time, you could really only see the eyes and occasionally the tentacles. It was mostly just a mass. Yeah, it was awful. And so it begins latching onto the U-boat. And uh, and then they call Godzilla, and Godzilla like scares it off, but it takes well, the U-boat with it. Don't they send Godzuki down to get Godzilla? Oh yeah, they see something cautious. So yeah, they, Godzilla comes back, does his best Gorosaurus, Gor, yeah, Gorosaurus impression, and then goes back after scaring the, goes back down to fight the octopus. Yep. And as they're pulling the uh, the, the U-boat down underwater, it's starting to. Uh, leak yeah even though that makes no goddamn sense because the second you have a leak in a submarine it's over at certain depths it's just it's just instantaneous pressure different like equalizer it just immediately floods and it's over but, no, we can just hold it with our hands. Yeah, and then Godzilla wrestles it back. It just goes back up. And, yep. And they're like, yeah, we're safe! Hooray! We Go- t- Godzilla ties up the octopus, throws <sighs> him in a cave, and then... And then steals it just like he did with the Firebird. Yeah, and the day was saved. Thank God. And then they're Is like, this also the same episode where, the, again, they look at the camera and they go, an amazing battle's happening! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, but then they cut to the fight. It's not really a fight, it's just kind of Godzilla wrapped up. Oh yeah, no, it's dumb. But yeah, uh, so now we move on to... The, the best one, the, so, somehow. No, it was not the okay, best Okay, the one. best monster, somehow. It's the best monster in the entire series. Axor. The Beast of Storm Island. Or the Storm Beast, depending on your persuasion. So... They, they're they like, oh no, we're in a storm. Because of course we're in another storm. The Canadian Coast Guard told them. That it was going to be bad. And they're like. They didn't listen. They're like, we don't care, we've got Godzilla. Yeah, and so they, they're like, we can, we can, we can fucking, we, we can fucking park the ship on Storm Island. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's take shelter from the storm on Storm Island. I mean, it worked. Yeah, it did. They, they found a, a, a disheveled man. Yeah, and God, Godzuki grabbed his face. <laughs> <laughs> Just pulled him up and said, and then they were like, we gotta, and the, the disheveled man's like, we gotta leave. And, the, and they're like, okay. Alright. And, and, the, and then fucking Axor shows up. This fucking cobra looking motherfucker with a gross sack on his head. 
We'll get to what that sack does in a bit. Indeed. Uh, and then and then it hits this disheveled man with a mind beam. Like, there's this beam that just, like, blacks out his eyes, and he goes unconscious. And they're like, well, let's just put him in bed with the child. That'll be fine. Nothing bad will happen. I mean, they're in bunk beds. They're not in the same bed, but, yeah, you yeah. know, they're, they're next to each other. Yeah, no. And this is obviously the 70s. I mean... What you, I, can, you can trust a disheveled man. What I really wanted was a recreation of the scene from, uh, uh, versus Megalon. Start slamming the child. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, he decides he's gonna go back to... Yeah, where... he, he wakes up in the middle of the night. Yeah, and goes to where Brock is controlling the ship. And and Brock looks back and goes... Oh, ah, disheveled man, hello. It's, it's fine. And goes back to steering the ship. And then the disheveled man does the zombie walk towards him. And we don't see what happens, but Brock is tied up in a chair. And zombie man is taking them back to, the, to Storm Island. And grounds the ship completely yeah don't know how considering it has those weird hydrofoils but whatever um so they 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 all wake up or whatever and then they're like oh no we're back here and the man has gotten off the boat Mm -hmm. ran back onto the island we're gonna go find him but you pete and and Gatsuki, you guys both got a cold from the storm, so uh, you, you guys just stay here. Don't worry, that will factor into the plot for some fucking reason. It's Chekhov's cold. Yes. And also, it it works to create tension so that another Deus Ex Machina can be used. So but anyway. So they climb up the mountain, they look down, there, there's this huge stone temple. The Egyptians had nothing on it. Supposedly, it isn't. It doesn't look that big, but inside it's massive. It's bigger on the inside. It's like the fucking temple from uh, Temple Doom, Indiana Jones. But anyway, so they go, they go in there, and I, I think they get caught. I don't remember. Yeah, and they take them to Axor and turn them into mind slaves with, to work on the pyramid. Mind slaves with very nice eyeliner. Indeed. Well, no, it's. It's eye shadow. Whatever. Because it goes all the way around. Look, I'm not a makeup person. I don't care. No, I'm not either. Anyway. We didn't take a screenshot of it. It, it doesn't matter. It's pretty dumb. So, yeah. And then they're like, the child and the monster are still around. Because uh, Pete and Godzuki decided to go play with a frisbee. Because you know you can do that when you got a cold. I mean, they're only sneezing. It's not that bad. I don't know. Godzuki has laryngitis. According to Dr. Pete. <laughs> yes. Dr. Pete diagnosed him with laryngitis. It was fucking dumb. But yeah, uh, so... Godzuki can't call Godzilla. This will become important. Because they, uh... First of all, Pete can't, can't fucking keep quiet. Every time he speaks, he yells. And yet somehow half the time he's not heard. Well, it's mostly because people don't care. It's fucking well, but when he sneezes, mm, that's right. when they know. But anyway, they they decide to go to the temple, and um, um <laughs> yeah. So, so I can't remember if that happens before they meet the rest of the crew and find out that they're possessed. I think it's, I think it's before because they go there and then they're hiding behind a wall. He sneezes and. Axor uses his fart sack oh, yeah. to uh, to blow them. And yes. then they're like, let's get out of here. And like, Gazuki gets stuck in the doorway because he's fat. I uh, guess. Oh, because, all right, they do get out. And, well, but I think they try the beam on. Uh, oh, yeah. On yeah. Pete. And then it doesn't work. And which is really awful because you literally called it out. Well, yeah. Way early when they first said that he had a head cold. And then he's like, I bet that's going to block the mind beams. And I was sitting there like, that's really dumb. There's no <laughs> way that's going to happen. And then I watch as it literally happens. And I was like, I hate this show. So, yeah, they run back to their ship and they're like, you know what? We're just going to fucking bail. Yeah. They Godzuki pushes the, the, the ship back into the water. <laughs> Sorry. 
Well, you, well, you won't get mind control now. No, oh, yeah, you're right. And they 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 get to going. Axor's there, uses his fart sack Literally. to make a tidal wave to and, pull them back in. Yep, fucking great. And then, uh... And then the crew comes back and they're like, yo, we got him. Yep, and and then, I don't remember how it happens, but they, they end up running away from, uh... from Axor. And they discover a cave... Or a cavern with gas coming out. A fart hole, if you will. Yes. So they decide to hide in this hole. Because that hole is the most appealing looking place. <laughs> it looked like death. Like by magma. I. It wasn't. To be fair, like 16 episodes ago, they just climbed in a volcano for shits and giggles. You're not wrong. Uh, so, yeah. So they're hiding in it. And Pete is screaming at Godzuki <laughs> about what's going on. And Axor just can't find them. And There's then a he lot s- of smoke. And then he sneezes. And that's when Axor figures out that they're there. And he starts shooting his weird beams and stuff. Um, and, he, and then he sucks up some smoke. And they're like, oh, he's getting powerful from that smoke. That's crazy. And then they fall into the pit. And then they're like, oh, we're, f- we're getting strong. Wow, my uh, head's clearing up. I have the power. And we literally watched the birth of He-Man. He- <laughs> Pete will return to this spot to create Castle Grayskull to become He-Man. He literally says, I'm getting stronger and stronger. And then he like raises his arms and it looks really dumb. And he acquires an aura and of strength. <laughs> He doesn't do anything with it. Godzuki actually goes to town and starts shooting fire breath. And starts, like, fucking up uh, Axor with his tail. And almost lifts him just by one of his toes. It was crazy. Yeah. And it, then his strength ran out. Yeah, and then it turns out it was temporary. So. And then they call Godzilla to do the Godzilla things. And the fight was fucking dumb. And then... And then he, the, Godzilla bitch slaps a gravity beam. It was fucking incredible he's just like nah dog I, I don't deal with that anymore okay but before that Godzilla manages to break the temple and Axor has a goddamn panic attack <laughs> because his orderly temple is now out of order and he must fix it <laughs> and Godzilla's like no fuck your OCD you come and fight me and then we get to this magical magical freeze frame that was an accident first try of him <laughs> turning and we cuz cuz we knew as he turned away as he turned back towards Godzilla he faced the camera <laughs> well we caught the most perfect frame imaginable and that is our axor it, that is act the axor in our hearts it was beautiful it was the, it was the hardest we've laughed <laughs> At least in this session, there were plenty of times when we laughed that hard um, in previous ones. But, god damn, Axor is beautiful. That beautiful, dumb-looking monster with his goddamn fart sack <laughs> and his mind control beams. And his chicken legs. Fucking chicken legs. We didn't talk about his chicken legs. Well, we should have because we didn't get a picture of him. Yeah. He's got chicken legs. He's got big, beefy arms, little tiny legs. Yeah, no, it's really dumb. He also vapes. Anyway, um. Godzilla shoots a fire breath at a wall and makes. Turns a me- into a mirror. Yeah, it just makes glass. Crazy. Out uh, of rock. And I was like, he's gonna fire the mind beam and it's gonna bounce back at him. And I thought he was just gonna, like, make himself dizzy or, like, mind control himself. No. <laughs> it shorts him out. It shorts him out, which means that he fucking vanishes. It shorts him out of reality. <laughs> just gone. He was an illusion. He was a figment of our imagination. He was a figment of his own imagination. And thus, he has disappeared. Everyone is no longer mind controlled. And then they get on the calico and they're like, see you later, bitches. We'll, we'll we send you a ship. We called the Coast Guard. <laughs> we'll send you a ship at some point. Good luck. I hope you guys off. can survive. Yeah, good luck. I'll see you later. See ya. 
And that's the end of that fucking episode. And that was this session. Well, this session was great. We this, got some real gems out of this one. The, the, they were there were gems. It was like, and then we got the it ghost was garbage. <laughs> Amazing, garbage. Pretty decent with some high spikes. Like storm, uh, the Beast of Storm Island was not that great of an episode, but no. it, it had its moments though. It, it had some beautiful moments. It really did. Because I think. Initially, I'd only had like four spots I want, or four frames I wanted to get, and then we ended up with like eight. Oh yeah, because there were just some that were just incredible. Anyway, um, please join us whenever when we. Well, if all goes according to plan, it should be tomorrow when this when the next one goes up. Yep, and it'll be just as terrible. All right, I, see you guys later. I hope you're enjoying Godzuki Week. No.